Matthew 11:28 says, "Come to me, all you who are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest." Here we have someone who will help you take off the load of your shoulders. Welcome, welcome to WordNet, and I'm Father Sodi Sebastian. Nice to have you all. Today we have a special guest, Carol Hamilano, who has a Master of Arts in Pastoral Theology, uh, who is an author of the book called The Alluring Voice of God, Forming Daily Encounters who is also a co-host with the television program with Shalom Television Network. So also has published a lot of stories on Ligurian and uh, Life Teen International and The Upper Room. Thanks, Carol, for coming and uh, sharing your life and your experience with us. On top of everything that I mentioned, you are a spiritual director. Mm -hmm. And that's you. what we are going to be talking about more as well. But I, I also want to speak a little about your book. I know you didn't bring one copy, but then I will definitely get a copy from you. The, your, the book that you have written, The Alluring Voice of God, Forming Daily Encounters, because I, I'm sure that also has some connection to your being a spiritual director. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. the first question that I want to ask you is, what is spiritual direction? <laughs> sure. Um, actually, that's a question I get a lot. Uh -huh. um, what is a spiritual director and what, they, and what do they do? And really, it's an accompaniment. It's a person who accompanies another person in their life of faith and prayer. And so normally, people seek spiritual direction if they're um, discerning some, a vocation maybe in their life, whether it's married life or religious life or single life. Um, sometimes they are trying to discern God's voice, um, trying to understand where God is in the midst of their struggles. And so, so normally what happens in a spiritual direction meeting is we take that time to open up their experiences with their relationship with God and talk about how they can grow in intimacy with Him and how they might discern where God may be moving in their lives through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You know, there are some words that you uh you know, these are kind of the common uh, words that whenever we speak about spiritual direction and that you also already used it. First of all, direction. Mm -hmm. Second is discernment. Uh, third is uh, accompaniment. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I'm trying to get a little more into those terminologies, you know. Yeah. Direction. What is direction? Why do I need a direction? When we think about direction, the direction is for us as people of faith is God's will. Uh -huh. That's the direction that we're trying to follow. Uh -huh. That's the compass we're trying to discern. Yeah. And so when we talk about spiritual direction, a person who seeks spiritual direction has to have a desire to do God's will. Exactly. So if you come into spiritual direction, but you're not really wanting to seek God, you don't um, want to do His will, you already like, oh, I'm praying, asking God what my vocation is, but you really want to be married, uh -huh. then that means you're not really open to where the Holy Spirit is leading you and uh -huh. open to God's direction. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So when spiritual directors say direction, it's how do we discern God's will for our lives? How do we uh, make sure that everything that we do, our thoughts, our actions are in keeping with um, where God is calling us specifically with our unique gifts and abilities to proclaim to the world, to be His disciples here. That's why I'm going to bring in the other word that I mentioned, discernment. How do I discern the will of God in my life? I don't know. I don't know how, to, how, how, I, how can I discern it? How can I know that uh, it is God who is telling me, drink that water now or don't drink that water now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, um, actually, that's the topic of my book, The uh -huh. Luring Voice of God Forming Daily Encounters. Um, a lot of the 
reasons why I end up developing that book is because my youth, my young adults, as well as my spiritual directees will ask me that question. Carl, how do I know um, that I'm really listening to God versus myself or that of the mm -hmm. world? And so the guidance that I try to share with them first is um, say that you have a friend that is, um, uh, say that you have someone that says, Carl, did you know such and such person said, did this? And you believe that piece of gossip because you didn't know who they were. But now say that you have a best friend, Tracy, and they said, Carl, did you know your best friend, Tracy, cheated on an exam? Mm -hmm. Well, because you know Tracy, you knew her beliefs, her values, you were there spending time with her mm -hmm. and understood that Tracy would never do that because I was there with her and she knew all the answers to that exam. So in that same way, if we're trying to discern God's voice, the very first thing we need to do is to get to know what His voice sounds like. Mm -hmm. And of course, that is Scripture. Mm -hmm. And so Scripture can be very intimidating. My Bible, I have to admit, I'm very guilty. It got dusty with layers, thick layers of dust. Because you didn't you take it out. Take because it out. I never took it out. Take because it out. right when I got to Deuteronomy, cutting cutting animals, sacrifice, you know, af after I got to there, I'm like, nope, I can't do this you anymore. You didn't want any, any of this cruelty to the animals, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so, but what I try to re recommend to my youth, young adults, and spiritual directees is to start where the Gospels are, the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Because here we get to see the life, the teachings of Christ, um, God's Son, and what better way to know God's voice than through His Son. Yeah. And so that's one of the steps. The second step is to listen um, for God's voice in silence. So how many times do we pray? This is me. God, um, I'm, I'm really upset because uh, my mom is, having, um, is fighting with me over something. Um, I can't do well in my school because these exams are too difficult. Um, and I'm going on and on and on and on. And then at the end, I say, Amen. Mm -hmm. And at that time, where is God? Jesus is tapping him on the shoulder saying, Corral, Corral, oh, I have some words of wisdom for, oh, 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 you're going to the next prayer. Okay, I'll wait patiently. Oh, 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 I have something to say. Oh, oh, okay, you're going on to the next topic. And so we need to take time in silence, which basically means not only can, should we read scripture to get to know God, but we have to take time in silence to reflect on how those words um, relate to us and what God might be saying directly to us. And then, of course, another way is through to our traditions of our beautiful Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. And so every sacrament, every mass, every prayer, every devotion, every teaching of our Catholic faith are opportunities to hear God's voice. And then the last is to remember that um, the Holy Spirit is at work and that God can be seen and heard through everything around us because He created everything around us. And so sometimes um, in our walk of faith, and this is me in particular when I was growing up in the faith, is, oh God, I can only hear God at church on Sundays. And then when I go on to school and go to work, you know, I just live my life. Yeah. But we know as Catholics that God can speak through other people, through a, you know, a video program, through music, through the circumstances in our lives. Through the nature. Through nature. St. Francis of Assisi is such a perfect example of that. And so how do we discern God's voice? Well, we have to first get to know Him, take time in silence to really listen to His words, frequent the sacraments, and allow the Holy Spirit to help us attune ourselves to where God is working all around us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we will go into some of those things in depth a little more. Sure. But before we do that, let me ask something personal about you. Mm -hmm. uh, Carol, you... Uh, you, of course, did your pastoral theology program, Masters. But what led you to be a spiritual guide and what inspired you? Sure. Well, um, I was a director of youth and young adult uh, ministry uh, at a parish in Redlands. Uh -huh. You can and say the name of the parish? Which oh, is? the Holy Name of Jesus okay. <laughs> in Redlands, if any of you are out there listening. And so I was there and one of my young adults came up to me and asked me to be their spiritual director. And at that time, I already had my own spiritual director and I absolutely felt um, very honored and humbled when she asked me, um, but also very scared and timid because I wasn't formed in spiritual direction and I just remembered feeling I'm not worthy 
to, to have this title. I'm not worthy to be a spiritual director. And so I ended up talking to my own spiritual director about it. And she told me, Corel, if someone is coming to you asking you um, to be their spiritual director, it's because um, they see you witnessing your faith in a beautiful way. They see that you have the gift of counsel. And so I highly recommend that you pray about accepting this and then you know, receiving formation. And so that's what I ended up doing. Um, I said yes to that directee and I absolutely loved it. It was my favorite part of being um, a director of youth in a young adult ministry, is accompanying people, um, helping them journey um, in their life of faith and prayer. Just want to let you know, off the, off the line, uh, just a little while ago, I interviewed, um, it was uh, Rosalie, and her husband, Eric, is a deacon at the Holy Name of Jesus in Redlands. Oh, very nice. <laughs> so it's like a coincidence. Uh, you know, you are still ministering there uh, at, the, at, the, at the, uh, the parish. Anyway, that is off the record. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, now, <coughs> uh, y you know, people go to spiritual direction. You mentioned about, you know, what is spiritual direction, knowing. So also accompanying and trying to make the discern, you know, discerning what is the will of God for me. Yeah. Um, how important is this spiritual direction in our life? Hmm. I think for a person who um, is very, is struggling or is in that, um, a place of where they need to make a, an important decision I think spiritual direction is very important. Um, however, um, I would like to share it because some people will mention, you know, it's, it's difficult for me to sp find a spiritual director or a lot of priests are very busy right now because they have so many pastoral duties to do in their parishes. Um, that spiritual direction is not one of those, um, it's not one of the sacraments, it's not vital to get um, to heaven, of course. But spiritual direction is one of the tools that help us to grow in holiness. It's one of the tools that our beautiful church um, gives us as ways, as, um, uh, as guides to help us on our journey. And so I hope that answers your question. Mm -hmm. When I say spiritual director, a spiritual director who has been trained, mm -hmm. who can really be there with the person, you know, you use the right word accompaniment. And that's the reason I, I asked you that question. Mm -hmm. You know, it is something, it's a field, let's say. It's a field of uh, ministry that has been kind of, I don't want to say ignored, that has not been exp, you know, explored mm -hmm. in a proper way. Whereas, it is very vital. It is vital to our spiritual life. So mm -hmm. what you're doing is something great. Thank you, Father. Something very mm -hmm. great. And uh, it is, you know, as you mentioned also, accompanying people. You're accompanying people in their life journey and uh, trying to helping them find meaning and right direction. You know, I'm using the same words that you also used earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, some of those questions you must have been wondering, why am I asking those questions? You sh he should know, not for me. I was asking that for the sake of our audience, but we're going to take a short break. Please don't go away. We have a lot of beautiful information on spiritual direction and the need and the necessity of spiritual direction in our lives. Stay, stay with us. You have heard the traditional Veni Creator Spiritus, Come Creator Spirit, song. We do not know the author of this song. It is an invocation to the Holy Spirit, and it is sung in the Catholic Church during the liturgical celebrations of the Feast of the Pentecost. It is also sung during the ordinations of priests and bishops, and at some solemn events. 
It is such a heavenly feeling and experience when we listen to it being sung in Gregorian chant. Father Mike Manning has written a booklet to understand this great song of praise. He takes the English translation of the song and explains it in detail, but in plain language. It will surely help you understand and pray with this song in praise of the Holy Spirit. We want you to have a copy of this booklet. Call the number on the screen or email us. You can also order it through our website. Come, Holy Spirit, enlighten our minds and hearts. Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying our wonderful discussion with Carol uh, on spiritual direction. So also what led her to be a spiritual director and the importance of spiritual direction in our lives. You know, when we speak about spiritual direction, um, can, you, can you help me understand if there is a difference between spiritual direction and counseling? Mm -hmm. Or are they the same? They are definitely different. It's a good thing you ask. Um, so counseling, this is what I, I will give you an example to oh, help it sure. be clearer. Uh -huh. So someone says, Father, uh, my husband and I are struggling with our marriage right now. Um, I don't know, we don't know what to do. Um, I don't know how to communicate with, um, you know, my spouse, please help us. So this is a person that would need counseling. They want specific tools to help them communicate better so that their uh, marriage can continue to grow and thrive. A person who is seeking spiritual direction is a different type of need and a different type of request. They're saying, you know, Father, I'm here because um, my husband and I, we are not doing very well in our marriage, and I don't know what God is calling us to do mm -hmm. in this relationship. Mm -hmm. So the fact that that person is seeking where is God in the middle of this um, tumultuous time between me and my husband? And what is God calling me to do to fix this? Um, that is a question for spiritual direction. Mm -hmm. So spiritual direction is always about one's relationship with God. Whereas counseling is normally about um, how to, the tools, the tools that you need, um, therapeutic tools to help you communicate or to cope with certain things that are going on in your life. Mm -hmm. But now the question is, unless I have my relationship with you as my brother and sister or husband and wife, how can I ever have or experience the God whom I'm not even seeing? Mm -hmm. So is there some kind of a connection or link between the spiritual direction and counseling, can we ever totally separate them? Hmm. That's an interesting question because there have definitely been times when a directee has come um, seeking spiritual direction, but they actually really needed counseling. counseling. And they could do both because yes, when we're going through something difficult, like um, a marriage is, um, is very difficult at that moment, um, you need spiritual help because you're just like, God, I don't know what's going on and I, I want to love him the way that I know you're calling me to love him. Um, but at the same time, you need those um, therapeutic tools to help you communicate. And so I believe that there is, it is necessary for both, both. Um, especially for things that, you know, a spiritual director is not, uh, do not have the, the education and the skills to be able to help a spiritual directee with. And so I think there are definitely times where you need both mm -hmm. um, and that yeah, can happen. Carol, you brought something very important to hear. Um, see now, spiritual direction and uh, counseling when you speak about, especially in our society today, uh, uh, to be a counselor or you know, to, to be a psychologist, I need to have certain, a kind of a credential I need to have a certain number of uh, mm -hmm. counseling experience. I need to also have a certification. Mm -hmm. Without that, I cannot practice. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, do, we, do you need any kind of credential or a certification to practice spiritual direction? 
Well, I would advise that you do. Um, <laughs> there are probably spiritual directors who don't. Um, but I think it's always advisable that you do receive some sort of formation because how can we accompany people the best um, that we can if we ourselves don't have the tools um, to best help them and serve them? And so there have been stories, unfortunately, of spiritual directors um, doing harm to the people that they're trying to serve simply because um, they didn't receive they didn't that adequate training. Yeah. And so spiritual direction uh, formation is very vast. You'll see that there's certificate programs that are maybe a year long to two years. There's master's programs, there's PhD programs. Uh -huh. And so uh, my suggestion is to really um, find a program that allows you to gain as much knowledge as you possibly can and as much training as you possibly can um, to serve the directees that you have in your care. And if you don't say that, you know, you receive some formation, but you see a directee and you're like, oh no, I don't think I can really fully serve them because I feel like I'm not fully mm -hmm. trained there to seek some supervision in your work in spiritual direction mm -hmm. or to say to the directee, I'm so sorry, but you know, this, this is where my, my knowledge mm -hmm. lands mm -hmm. and I need to send you off to someone who can better care for you. I'm asking some of these questions, I know you might be wondering now, these are kind of uh, technicalities of it, but because this is one of those uh, discipline, let's say, in our church, so also discipline that we should definitely have in life, which have not been explored properly and have not been explained properly to our audience. And mm -hmm. today, the need is arising more and more, you know, yes. the need for it. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason I'm asking you this question. So another question that I, I'm sure you might have been already asked by others, or maybe somebody is going to ask you, is uh, with regard to the liability. Mm. Because, no, yes. as, I, as a psychologist, when somebody comes to me, uh, I'm liable too. Because uh, uh, like a doctor or a nurse or even as a priest for that matter, mm -hmm. I also have the liability by, you know, there are a lot of restrictions. Do you also have that kind of a liability as a spiritual director? I'm sure we do. Um, anytime you invite someone to your office, to your home, uh, anytime you provide um, some sort of service, whether it's ministerial um, or professional, there is always going to be some sort of liability. Um, and I think that's the reason why formation is so important in any type of ministry that you serve in, in any type of capacity. Um, to ensure that the people that we're serving were not doing any harm mm -hmm. and were um, really uh, privileging our our uh, accompaniment in uh -huh. a way that's healthy for them. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure there is a liability as in, mm -hmm. as with anything else. You know, we speak about pastoral counseling. What is, what difference is there? Or can we have any kind of a difference between pastoral counseling and spiritual direction at all? Um, well, I would say it's similar to the question about um, just counseling, counseling in general. Is pastoral counseling is more of you're going to a parish, you're seeking help from a, a ministerial, ministerial leader, whereas counseling, general counseling, is therapeutic and may or may not involve the faith and um, people who work in the church. And so pastoral counseling is the same um, difference in the, in the sense that um, we're coming seeking help about tools, sometimes about prayers, sometimes about um, actual coping skills to help us through whatever um, difficulty we're bringing you with. Mm -hmm. Where spiritual direction is really focused on that relationship with you and God. Mm -hmm. What have you been, you know, you have been in this, uh, you know, being a spiritual guide for quite a long time, I'm sure. Yes. Um, what was, can you share with us some of your experiences? I know you don't have to give the names of anybody. Yes. These are confidential as well, but then in general, how was your experience so far? Um, I love it. Um, it's my favorite ministry. I've been serving in ministry for quite a long time. I started um, as a, uh, what, is it, what would we call us, worship leader mm -hmm. um, at our church, and then um, catechist and youth and young adult minister, altar server, oh, not altar server, but um, lector. So I've been able to serve in a variety of ministries, but spiritual direction is the ministry that speaks to me um, specifically because I, I get the privilege of being able to hear about the experiences of others 
uh, in their faith life. And so um, sometimes they'll talk about how, you know, they're having difficulty uh, figuring out where God is when they're single. Uh, I have a lot of young adults who are single and like, oh, Corral, I'm having such a hard time um, finding that man that, that will love me or that will appreciate me for me. And I remembered in those moments sharing with them, you know, do you know that Songs of Songs 4-7, mm. there's no blemish in you, my child. You are beautiful. I'm butchering it, mm -hmm. but that's yeah, basically no. the sense. And being able to share that, that piece of wisdom or that, that verse, helping them remember that God is there, that regardless of whether they're able to find that perfect soulmate or not, that God is, God is, our, is everyone's perfect soulmate in a sense because He loved us into being and He uh, sees us as perfect and as His, His children. And, you know, couple months later, they'll come back and they'll say, you know, Corel, I feel at peace because I, I finally realized that the reason why I haven't found someone is because I haven't learned to love myself. I haven't learned to accept God's love for me. And once I did, I'm better able to, you know, to really mm -hmm. put myself out there and to be confident regardless of whatever happens on these dates. And so those little stories, um, those moments really fills me with joy mm -hmm. because I think everyone, you know, everyone here, I'm sure, we all have this desire to do God's will and to make a, a positive difference in our world. I remember going to a funeral and um, one of the eulogists said, you know, about the deceased, mm -hmm. this person, uh, this person made this world better, left this world better than how she found it. This person left this world better than how she found it. And so I would offer that in prayer. God, help me to leave this world better than how I found it. Even if it's a small difference, I will take that. And so for me, those little small moments um, remind me that I'm doing God's work and bringing joy to others. And that to me is a blessing. May you take away as much load of others' life through your guidance and your spiritual direction. It's a divine ministry and a divine gift thank, thank you. you for sharing thank you for having your me. ministry so also about your personal life mm -hmm. and i'm sure our audience have enjoyed it and uh, they know where to find you now mm -hmm. sounds great thank you so, so much so that just in case somebody wants to get to get in touch with you they will definitely do that mm -hmm. and bring that joy of jesus mm -hmm. joy of the lord the resurrected christ thank you very much and i thank hope you. you all enjoyed our show uh, please continue to be with us continue to support our ministry and uh, if possible please also subscribe to our youtube channel may the blessed mother stay with you hold you close to her loving heart and loving heart and both of us as well mm -hmm. blessings